Yeah, if we think about the notions of uh, rigidity that they sort of, you know, um, define the word in one particular way thinkers go by, we couldn't call anything democracy that didn't resemble what happened in, in Athens. You yeah. Know, because it's like one definition. I've been criticized for using multiple definitions of patriarchy that all describe the same thing, but in a different emphasis, we're using different words depending on what the concepts I'm going to be using in the video. You know, yeah. so... This idea that somehow there's one version of what patriarchy means or racism means, and it must be, you know, less than 25 words long, and it comes, must come from a dictionary. Exactly, um, yeah. It, yeah, we, we don't do that except for things that they don't like. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, the whole obsession with what things are called just comes off as really reactionary and uncurious, you know, uh, lacking an internet, intellectual curiosity. They don't actually care about what the things are. Um, and you can see that with things like trigger warnings. I'm guessing everyone who mocks trigger warnings aren't ableist pieces of shit. You know, they're not actually all saying fuck people with PSD, PTSD, and stuff. They actually just don't know what it is, and they're just yeah. judging it entirely by what it's called. Mm. What, what really bothers me about like the whole ob objection to trigger warnings or to safe spaces is like, how does this affect you in any way? It, yeah, that's if you the Warning. If you don't need the safe space, these are not things that exist in your life. This is like, yeah. you know, ratings on movies when you're an adult. If you're going to see an R-rated movie, like, it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't affect you what the grade is. You can get into every movie. So if it helps other people and it does no harm to you, why are you spending so much time and energy hating on it? I just, I just don't get it. It's just like gay marriage. You know, the people opposed exactly. to gay marriage. It has no impact on your life. And if other people value it as important, who cares? You know, just let them do it. Yeah, You're not exactly. hurting anybody. Exactly. And then, you know, and, all, and that's why they have to create this straw man version of it that's destroying, you know, free thought on university campuses. That's not actually happening, but they have to say something like that because they need to have an argument against it. They don't have a real one, so they have to make one up. Just like the anti-Anita Sarkeesian people who, who straw man her on, you know, with such regularity. Yeah. It's mind-boggling, you know. I've never actually seen a critique of Anita Sarkeesian that didn't strawman her. Never. And I have watched yeah. dozens of those. Yeah. Ne they don't and exist. And that gets back to my point about them always taking strawman arguments. You know, pick the strong, uh, strongest, not the strawman. Show mm -hmm. your case and how right, you know, we should demonstrate how convincing your argument is by taking on the strongest opponent, not making your opponent's arguments as weak as possible. Humongous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that's like what I was saying. They don't actually know who those people are who have the strong arguments. You know, I was, you know, in my hangout with Bain, I mentioned Rebecca Walker and um, Kimberly Crenshaw, the two people who, along with Bell Hooks, basically created the third wave. They don't even know, or they know who Bell Hooks is, a lot of them, but they don't know who those two are, and they've just never heard the names before. So they can't even. You know, they can't construct an argument against their rhetoric because they don't read they haven't read the rhetoric and or even know who the person is you know like uh i i would be shocked uh, to hear that any of the anti-femme thought leaders have even read the uh, rebecca walker's essay becoming the third wave i guarantee you almost none of them have and they're not familiar with feminist activism either um i think you know i was i think i was watching an interview with somebody on the skeptic feminist show and they talked about feminist activism and he said, oh, well, you know, in New York State now was trying to work against a bill that would give fathers 50% custody. Like, well, maybe they had an interest of the child position. I mean, I don't know, you know, he's just listing off this one sort of talking point as against all feminist activism. Yeah. And portraying it as against men. We're not talking about issues like, you know, child brides or, you know, um, redefining rape in ways that are more inclusive for, for men and women. All these kinds of things always get shunted to the side in favor of, you know, what people say on the internet or, you know, yeah. in, in gaming. They're not actually engaging with feminist activism in the real world. They're only engaging with the online versions of it that they can mock. Yeah, and uh, I mean, people, I, I, th I think quite a lot of feminists would probably disagree with this, but I don't consider critical analysis to even be activism, really. You know, what Anita Sarkeesian does is critical analysis. It was primarily used to be about movies, but she does mainly video games now, I guess, although she still does movies a lot. That is an important part of feminism critical analysis and, and has been you know since the second wave but i'm i would hesitate to call it 
actual activism, you know, um, just because it's, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing that just because it's not activism means it's not valid. It's valid. And in fact, I'm myself, I'm about to start a series of doing critical analysis stuff. So I definitely think it's valid, but uh, you know, I would, I would hesitate definitely before calling it activism, but that is the sort of stuff they focus on because they don't even, I guess they don't know what feminist activism is. Yeah. Uh, the stage is agitated. Uh, Sorry? Tom, what, sorry, what was that? Yeah, oh, this is so, um, shit. You know, you can't be a critic if you have an agenda, of course. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah, which makes no sense. But, it's like, yeah. Well, that's what people always say, like, oh, and he is not a critic because she's pushing an agenda. She's a, uh, she's, she's Hitler, but left Hitler. <laughs> but like she's yeah. barely she's very very moderate really and i mean i guess yeah, in terms of her positions on feminism i would say she's um a f she's not a particularly intersectional uh, feminist but she's pretty mainstream third wave yeah so yeah, saying, I mean, uh, grassroots organizing, educate, act, uh, agitate, organize and she can do parts one and two but she's not doing parts three mm, mm. Yeah. And I think absolutely the kind of work she does, the kind of work that others like her, like Lee Alexander do, that's important um, because gaming is a, very, is, is a thing that's becoming more and more, you know, mainstream culturally and um, you know, important culturally. And to make, to, when 50% of, pop, of, of the population doesn't necessarily feel that welcome in the gaming community, that's a problem, you know. And uh, just in terms of sheer amounts of people impacted, I mean, even though it's not a like it's not a life or death thing or anything, it's we are talking about a lot of people here. So you know, it's definitely an important thing. And same goes with movies; that's even more people. You know. Um, yeah, and for the industry, that means money. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I I myself tend to focus on when it comes to entertainment more on the um, people side of it, like a. How many women are actually being hired as writers, directors, producers? How many women are actually involved in high levels of game design and stuff like that? Um, that, is, to me, is more important than the actual content of what's being put out, but they're both important. Uh, I personally would focus on getting the numbers of people in the industry up, and that's why I was a big fan of, of Ghostbusters. And not necessarily the film itself, although I didn't think the film was bad. I think it was very important because they went way over the normal gender ratio um, on a film. And that is, that's groundbreaking, and that definitely needs to be celebrated and um, replicated. It needs to be um, highlighted because other films should try and follow suit. You know, it's, it's ridiculous in 2016 to have gender role-based jobs that are not, you know, have nothing to do with biology. There's no, nothing about script supervision that means you have to be a woman to do it, you know. Men can read too. So, yeah, yeah, Jessica Jones was really good at. There were a lot of women involved from the director and the writer and the exactly. Cast and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't hear them complaining about Jessica Jones, which was a, I think, you know, a very feminist movie in a lot of ways. Or sorry, uh, Netflix series. That's actually um, a, a series that I'm going to be starting soon is a critical analysis of female superhero comics, and the very first one I'm doing is Alias, which was the comic that Jessica Jones is based on. And I'm going to be cool. having a go at that TV show, actually, <laughs> uh, in some ways. Uh, it's a good TV show um, and had, you know, important um, feminist messages and stuff. But, you know, pretty poor adaptation of that comic. But anyway. I can't speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I'm making a series about it, because not a lot of people who I know can speak to it. You know, and, I, I, in, in this day and age where superheroes are the thing, you know, the, the modern equivalent of Greek myth, you know, they need to be talked about and analyzed, definitely. Um, and female um, representation needs to go way up because they're superheroes. Biology doesn't matter anymore when you have superpowers, you know? Like Thunderfoot, was it Thunderfoot? No, it was Davis, it was Davis Orini, who H-Bomb did a video about when he was bitching about, um, about Black Widow being um, you know, able to uh, be part of the Avengers. It's like, you look at that team and the woman is the one that seems unbelievable to you. Not the giant green, green mutant thing with, with superpowers and who can, is a rage monster. Not the guy who can fire arrows with superhuman accuracy, even though he's not, not a superhero. Enough, yeah. You know, uh, you know, all that he stuff. Wants. He's like, well, she's not a, su she doesn't have superpowers. So why is she such a good fighter? Well, neither does fucking the Archer guy. And he's fucking uh, superhumanly accurate. 
You know, he doesn't even need to look and still hit targets with his arrows. You know, it's ridiculous. And, you know, but, but the woman is the one that is mind blowing <laughs> to them. It's oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. For a book that sometimes referenced in British political science, um, I can't remember the name of the author, and I feel bad about that, but it's called uh, Space Invaders, and it talk, talks about the impact of when women actually take over a space that's previously been dominated by men, yeah. and how people react to that. And I think I Arimi's reaction that actually, is, Because that is going to be one of the main themes of my hangout with um, H. Bomber guy and Char 42. That's, that's what Gamergate is all about. That's my belief. Yeah. Is that no matter what they say, what Game About is, is really about is a reactionary movement against females invading a previously male-only space. Because mm. that is the most male-only space in recent memory is video games, you know. And sports. Mm. Professional sports. Well, yes, true. Very much so. I was just, I was, yeah, I mean, sports is entertainment culture as well. I just don't think about sport because I just don't care about it. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Toads, yeah, exa it's exactly the same. Yeah. And when you hear stuff like, um, you know, the, the pitches that female soccer, the, the U.S. female soccer team gets a play on is, is something that they would never make the male team play on and they get paid less. Oh, right. stuff. About that. Yeah, yeah. They play on AstroTurf, the female U.S. soccer team, which would never be forced on the, any male, professional male team um, who, you know, <laughs> always play on real grass. Yeah. Sorry? That, that's just a huge blunder on their part. I mean, I'm not, I'm in the same boat as you. I don't really, I'm not much of a sports is just like music uh, mostly, but like, even like as somebody who couldn't give a fuck about like soccer, like that just makes me. Yeah. And the, they use the capitalist excuse of, oh, well, you know, the, the female teams don't generate as much income for us so we can pay them less. But that's not how it actually works in the real world. You know, if you weren't a sports team, you wouldn't be allowed to do that. That's not how it works. Mm. Agreed. Hey, I'm just gonna step out for a few minutes. So you guys are like two minutes. So you guys just keep going. And then yeah, sweet. I'll back. I'll, yeah, I'll follow the conversation and interrupt again when I have something relevant to say. <laughs> All right, sweet. All right. Let's go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was wanting to talk to you about um, your channel and, and and how your growth and all that and what plans you might yeah. have and stuff like that kind of been slacking on getting this newest video out that I've been hyping up in my past few, but like, it's going to be my first, like, non-social justice going to do a really, like, in-depth kind of walkthrough of my experiences listening to Death Grips, who I don't know if you're familiar with. To, to who, sorry, say again? Um, <clears throat> uh, the band is Death Grips. They're from California, and they're a crazy experimental hip hop trio. I think I've heard the name, yeah, but I, no, I wouldn't claim to have heard anything by them or know anything about them. Yeah, well, watch that video and you'll find out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, because you're a muso, Comes right? Out. Huh? You're a muso, right? Sorry, that's New Zealand slang for musician. Sorry, you're cutting out a bit. Oh, I was just saying, um, I was asking if you, you're a musician, right? Are you still can't hear me? Crap. No, I'm back now and we can't hear them. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey. <laughs> All right. Uh, hello. <laughs> Let's get back on track. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. It's falling apart. Yep. Yeah. We're tearing it. We're tearing. Feminism is tearing itself apart. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what's going on. <laughs> uh, Hangouts are weird. <laughs> Yeah, when um, I had a chance to um, meet Michael Rollins in real life when he was touring, or not touring, he was you know, touring Europe, he was visiting Europe, but you know, it's a Michael Rollins tour, a uh, <laughs> world tour. And um, we, yeah, we got to hang out for like hours and talk without any technical problems or delays or sound <laughs> challenges. It was fabulous. A Christmas yeah. mirror. He, he gets around. Uh, I've met him and I'm going to be seeing him again in a few days. And so will Tim. And I think he's met Chrissyosity too. Yeah, like I said, it's the world tour. Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Where were we? Um, talking about content coming up, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So let's see. I have a whole. Let me pull this up. Actually, in my like YouTube folder, I have a like a whole just ideas for videos. Um. Yep, I, I had. Keep 
I've had one of those the whole time I've had my channel as well. There's still a lot of stuff on yeah, there like, that I, when I first got started, I haven't done yet. Yeah. Yeah. Videos that are, videos that are done, videos that are in progress and then like just ideas. Um, so let's see. Um, I about the whole, like, cause I did, um, I did a series of videos when I first started about, um, Anthony Fantano's resist. Yep. Yeah, I watched here. that. Yeah. Please. That guy's a fucking joke. And, yeah, a lot of people um, had said, like, oh, he's just, it's a joke, it's a parody. And I was, I, I wanted to make a, a kind of video about like, satire. Just because something is supposed to be satirical or comedic does not mean you cannot critique it on the same level as something more serious. No, quite the opposite, in fact. I mean, I really, like, often, Kate, and oftentimes, satire and parody, particular, particularly political satire and political parody, is, is, is very ripe for, for criticism and analysis. Absolutely. Yeah, and, the whole, and, the and mostly reason, it's designed for that. You know, that's kind of the point. Yeah. Hmm. The whole reason in the first place was just because I was a huge fan of the needle drop for about five years, like I said in the beginning of the first one. But like, yeah, he he kind of took this direction. It was just you know, it was a regular old shit posting channel. It was a fun time, but then he just he I guess when resist capitalism started trending on Twitter, he took advantage of like it popular site guys did out this like iphone video of him like doing this really over the top character and i was like this is not great and then he made 14 more <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like come on s slow your roll a bit here buddy and i mean then he popped up in the uh the questions white men have for sjw's video oh and i kind of grunted at that um and he also tweeted calling me a whiny little bitch and now that's my twitter uh banner <laughs> i, I keep that <laughs> <laughs> I keep that stuff. Uh, it really makes me feel good knowing that somebody who I really respected from like 2010 till now, just, you know, being, it, doesn't, it doesn't really hurt me at all or anything. It's just, he's just kind of like, yeah, like nobody even really saw the tweet. It only had like five favorites on it or something. One of which was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's, yeah, in the video I've got coming out, I talk about how. Um, if you're not being targeted and um, insulted and whatnot by certain people as an online, like a prominent online leftist, feminist, social justice advocate, whatever, you're doing it wrong. And I wear that stuff as a badge of honor when people attack yeah. me, you know, especially the ones Edgy. that go on about feminism being a cult and stuff. I'm like, yep, I'm getting those. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it good. I'm doing good. I'm, a, I'm yeah. attracting <laughs> all the people that yeah, here we go. are supposed to attract. Yeah. <laughs> Digi Sphinx did a video response to me and I didn't I didn't actually really watch it yet and I don't know if I will, but like, you know, the dislike bar just kinda went like way down and people in the comments were like, You're 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 a moron, you're a this and this and I'm just like, Oh wow, I was actually waiting for this to happen. Like that was the first video where there were more dislikes than likes on the thing. Yeah. So that was great. That was My really one great. is uh, the I'm at Skeptic yeah. video. In fact, great. That and a video, a hangout that me and um, Tim did about Sargon are the only two videos I have that have more dislikes than likes. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I wear that stuff as a, to as a total badge of honor. So, yep. Oh, uh, you, guys, you guys are amateurs compared to me. They hate my stuff. Yeah, but you've got an advantage over us. You're a woman, of yeah. course. They hate oh, you. that's true. I get an inflation rate, right? I get an, <laughs> that's, my, that's my feminist yeah. privilege. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, the fact that you have a PhD that isn't real, according to them. Yeah, it's a political yeah. science PhD, so that makes it not uh, not real or whatever, I guess. Because statistical theory <laughs> just stops working once the data becomes about social phenomenon, not the natural world. It just breaks down. Yeah, exactly. That's That's right. Right. All statistical <laughs> theory just breaks down. Yeah. And you the, can't draw inferences. The, the people who, uh, well, what I love is when the people who, who ha try and have a go at, survey, at social research, like surveys, then go on to use anecdotal evidence in their argument. It's like, okay, so it's not okay to, to ask people in society, but to ask you, that's okay, but just not other people. All right, I get it. People who disagree with you, right. Yeah, it makes no oh, sense. You're making too much, yeah, you're making too much sense. You're being too <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get that one too, actually. I got a comment uh, today or yesterday that was freaking hilarious where this guy, this guy started off with this actually pretty nuanced critique of the AAU study from my Saigon video. And he ended the comment with like, and all you have to do is go to a campus and open your eyes and look around and see it's not the Congo. It's like, oh, dude, you're actually doing all right until you fucking busted in with an anecdotal bullshit at the end. Oh, uh, yeah. No, you're you not know, campus. 
Yeah. All you have to do is go out in nature and open your eyes and you can see God did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, there it is. Yeah. Perfect argument. Well, Davis Orini said the same thing about, about um, gynocracy. He was like, just open your eyes, man. I mean, there was oh, yeah. His <laughs> story, but still, you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if we're going to talk about uh, upcoming content, I'll pitch some of mine too, but I don't want to interrupt Tom's flow. And plug a couple of my things coming up too, if we're plugging. Yeah, go for it. Well, I don't want to. If Tom had other stuff that he wanted to um, pitch, actually, maybe you could talk about the introduce the collaboration because I'm doing the other part of it, which is the answers part three that's coming out. But you want to talk about this, your idea? This is this is juicy. All right. So, um, I mean, and it's weird because I don't want to be kind of a one trick pony because my most popular questions x has for y video but what we're doing is uh, we want to put together a uh, a questions um from feminists and anti-feminists or w's anti i don't know the, the title's still a work in progress but it's just going to be um a lot of us asking questions in a buzzfeed stuff i'll to i've already recorded my part um i just need to edit it and make it all look nice but Yeah, I think my favorite working title for that is Reasonable Questions to Anti-SJWs. That's reasonable, that's my... yeah. So so they're actually, they're not disingenuous like the rest of those videos tend to be? Well, I mean, I think one of the critiques was that they could have take, they could have done a better job, right, Tom? I think oh. we might wind up going a little bit, uh, I, I, I have a few few questions that I were a little bit uh, flippant and kind of comedic, but I think generally speaking, we're going to be pretty straight laced about it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the critiques was, you know, you guys want to mock Buzz, BuzzFeed, do it better, not worse. Mm, good yeah. call. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a good point. I just tried to make yeah. a mission. It's great. I don't <laughs> yeah. really think they were trying to mock BuzzFeed by being disingenuous. I think they were just being themselves. They just are that. They don't actually care. You know, it's like that um, Brave New World video I responded to. She had no interest in actually having people provide honest answers oh, to yeah. those questions. They weren't questions for those people. They were um, pithy observations posed as questions for her fans, you know? Yeah, I think Libertarian Socialist Rance just, uh, he framed it as like accusation marketing ends. Like, you harass anti-feminist women. Yeah. Would you like to comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a load, they're loaded questions. And I actually have got a video coming out about that too, about loaded questions. Mm. Wow, you've got a lot of videos coming out, Gareth. Uh, <laughs> you don't even know, man. I've, I've got my, my folder on um, my computer that I edit on has 10 working, that's videos I've actually started working on, not ones that are in a document as theory. There's the ones that have got editing projects set up for them, have scripts, you know, 10. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be canceling yeah. some of those, but, um, but yeah, I have a ton of stuff. Yeah. Like uh, I've got ideas to do um, videos about I my life. Is it something I don't talk about much? Um, like, uh, you know, in the nineties, you know, I was a hacker in the nineties and I'm going to talk about my experiences yeah. as, uh, in that, in that um, world, in that uh, movement, whatever. And it's relevant to my channel too, because it was an activist movement. Well, not all of, not every hacker in the nineties was an activist, but there was a big, big undercurrent of, of um, technology based uh, freedom of information based activism and um, releasing people who were being held uh, without charge and stuff. Yeah, there was a lot of that stuff. So it is relevant to my channel, but also, you know, I think, People, it's because a friend of mine was on Facebook making a comment about um, 90s hackers based on like, uh, you know, stuff from the Matrix, you know, dressing in leather trench coats and being all trendy and stuff. But actually, my experience with those, there were a lot of fat loners in their parents' basements. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you see them get arrested and stuff, like there was a guy called Zykon who was, um, and I don't think he was an anti Semite, I just think he, the name sounded cool. Um, but uh, he was uh, in a group called Global Hell, which was the biggest hacking group in the world for a few years. And uh, when he got arrested, he was just like a 19 year old, white, spotty, fat kid, you know? And, it was just, yeah. and he's, uh, you know, getting sent to federal prison. Um, Sounds just like me. 
<laughs> well, I was certainly all three of those things. I was a lonely, fat, white kid when I was yeah. a ninety second too. And I yeah. stopped doing it when I got my first girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Literally true story. I was like, I don't yeah. really want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah.